this is Apostle Desmond Thomas and welcome to PBQ prophetic and biblical question well today I want to um, do something different um, it's not a question and answer as usual um, but this is I just want to teach on a topic you know that is very important that I felt that we need to understand about you know at this particular time you know um, Originally, I'm from Africa. I have um, been able to see a lot of demonic activities going on there. And um, coming over to Europe, I thought it's going to be different. But un <laughs> unfortunately, I've been able to also witness a lot of demonic activities going on here. And so I want to begin to talk on the topic of identifying and diagnosing demonic entities and demonic activities you see we as christians you know we need to um understand how to be able to identify you know demonic activities demonic entities and um and diagnose them you know maybe you are watching me you are not saved um you don't know what i'm talking about but some strange things might be happening to you strange things might be going on in your house or strange things might be going on in your um, surrounding and um, by um, listening to the teachings today you are going to be able to put a finger into it and point at it and says I know these things have been taught this is demonic and something need to be done about it you see there are so many unexplained um, circumstances that are going on in people's life that they are not able to understand or put a finger into it to know what exactly is going on today I pray that the Lord will open your eyes to be able to see and identify um, these demonic activities that are going on if this is the first time you are watching um, this channel I would suggest that you you know subscribe to it and just like it um, make your comments and if you're going through any strange thing I mean and you feel that you need help I mean you can feel free to contact us and we believe by the grace of God we will be able to help so we are talking about um, identifying and diagnosing you know demonic entities and demonic activities you see I want us to understand that the devil's um, primary objective is to kill and to steal and to destroy. You know, Jesus Christ taught us in the book of John chapter 10 verse 10, he says, The thief comes not but for to kill, to steal and to destroy. He said, But I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. And you know what Jesus also said? He says, For the Spirit purpose the son of god was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil i thank god for the grace of god upon our lives to be able to destroy the works of the devil in different places in the world i'm talking about africa i'm talking about south america um, i'm talking about europe here where i live and even as far as asia um, North America, the Lord has uh, been using us in the area of deliverance to bring deliverance to God's people because Jesus Christ was manifested um, to destroy the works of the devil. So we need to understand this. Um, um, so let us just, let me just give you an outline here of, you know, some of the things that the enemy does um, in, in terms of I mean, carrying out his objective um, to kill, to steal, and to destroy. You see, one demonic powers tempt. I mean, one of the activities is to tempt. The scripture says, uh, um, that, um, I mean, that in John, sorry, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 3, that um, Jesus um, was led, uh, I mean, by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. The, 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 the devil is called the tempter. You know, um, it means, you know, to cause temptation to fall or temptation to sin. So that is one of his objectives. You know, what he will do is he will put snares and traps on the way, you know, intending for the person to sin so that he can have control over the life. So be careful of the temptations of the devil. And sometimes he can play on your lust. He can play on your lust and your entice. 
and and try to lure you you know into sin you know so we need to be careful because one of his activities is to tempt the second activity of the enemy is to afflict and uh, many of the diseases and sicknesses that are in the world today are caused by demonic affliction especially you know when you know um somebody is ill you know and they take them to the doctor and the doctor says i cannot I don't we, we, we don't even know what is wrong with you you are feeling something we cannot diagnose and in many circumstances things that cannot be diagnosed are caused by demonic you know powers because I mean you cannot I mean see a demon through you know I'm um, scan you know you cannot scan a demon that's why some people will complain I'm feeling this pain I'm feeling this things that are movement all over my body you know and the doctor says we cannot see anything wrong with you and so you know that automatically is demonic you know the demons have afflicted and they have caused some affliction in your body and you need to be delivered from those afflictions and um, there are demonic powers um, that need to be broken. The Bible says, For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the, the powers of the enemy. And no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. And every tongue that shall come, rise up against you in judgment you shall condemn. The other thing also um, demons do is they addict. Many people are addicted to drugs. Many people are addicted to food. Many people are addicted to alcohol, to sex, addicted to, you know, some strange things and pornography and all of these. And um, this is demonic. And many times you need the power of God to deliver you from those demonic um, addictions. So demons tempt, um, demons afflict, demons addict. They cause addiction. And so many addictions, you know, people are compelled, you know, to do certain things, you know. And uh, so those compulsive behaviors, you know, um, are many times caused by demonic powers. And uh, people, to force that person to be set free, that um, demon need to be driven out from that person's life so that the person can be free of that addiction. And so um, they also cause oppression. You know, many people have been going through so much oppression. They have been um, obsessed in their mind. They have been oppressed, you know, by many things that are going on in their life. Uh, you see mental breakdown. You see, all of these that the devil is doing in the life of people is to bring them to the ultimate end. And that ultimate end is to break them down to the point that he can even have absolute control, which is demonic possession and we need to understand that demon possess I mean they possess people that's when they talk about demon possession it means you know having total control and ownership of the person that the person is no longer in his right mind um, demonic powers have taken over the mind um, the body and the, um, um, and the spirit of that individual you know and so that demon that person is demon possessed um, is no longer in his right mind and another thing demons do as well they cause deception you see one of the things why you know many people have been deceived today even the reason why there are so many religions even in the world today is as a result of demonic um, um, deception because the enemy wants a war he, he, he is very, very easy. The Bible says he is a liar and the father of it. And so many people have been imposed to have a revelation of God speaking to them. But they have been, the Bible says, Satan has transformed himself as an angel of light. And his ministers have transformed themselves as well as angels of light. So therefore, there are so many deception in the world today. Many people have so much, so many, so, so much, I mean, diverse ideologies you know ideologies and philosophies of men the bible says it, people have been controlled by the prince of the power of the year the spirit that walks in the children of disobedience and so um they also cause hinder hinder they hinder people they are hindering spirit and also they are very resistant so therefore many people today they are experiencing delays they are experiencing setbacks they are experiencing all kinds of derailment in their life from them fulfilling their purpose in life as a result of demonic hindrances so there are many many things um, demons do but the bible tells us that we have authority over them jesus christ said um, it, um in the book of luke chapter 9 verse 1 he called his disciples together and gave them power and authority over 
all devils and to cure disease. Um, it's good news. It's not all doom and gloom. The Bible says that Jesus has given us, his disciples, power and authority over demonic spirits to cast them out. Praise God. It says, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out demons. So praise the Lord. We have the ability and we have the authority to cast out demonic powers. So, he says also in Luke chapter 10 verse 19, he says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Praise the name of Jesus. It's so amazing to know that we have power over demonic powers and these powers will not be able to hurt us. Well, today mainly I want to talk about what are called demonic haunting and prunes demonic hauntings and prunes you see there are many people who have been haunted by the powers of darkness um in england out here i have gone to many houses that have been even haunted that we have been praying we have prayed over the house all those manifestation of um haunting spirits in those houses just go out, out there through the prayers uh, um, of God's saints as we go and pray over those houses and people were delivered. I've delivered many houses here in the UK, in, um, in North America, um, Florida and all of those places in Africa. Houses that have been haunted by the powers of darkness uh, have been set free and the people who have been living there have been set free from those powers and we give glory and praise and honor to God uh, who is good and his masses and theirs forever. So we are going to talk about demonic hauntings and prunes. Um, we're going to talk about that. that God told the children of Israel to be very careful. It says in um, Joshua chapter 23 verse um, 11 to verse um, 13. It says, take good heed therefore unto yourself that you love your God. Else if you do not in any wise go back and cleave unto the remnant of these nations, even these that remain among you and shall uh, make marriages with them and go in unto them and they to you know for a certain that the Lord your God will no more drive out any of these nations from before you but they shall be snares and traps unto you and scourges in your sight and thorns in your eyes until ye perish of this good land which the Lord your God given has given you. You see, so the Bible is warning us here, especially Christians. Uh, I mean, there are people who are not Christians, people who are engaging demonic powers, people who are engaging the witchcraft, people who are warlords, people, I mean, who are druids, people who follow after, you know, sorcery and all of these. The Bible says don't get anything to do with them don't even marry them don't 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 have anything to do with them he says because um they will their gods or their powers that they have are going to be sneers to you um, and and bible says they will be scourges to you um and they would um affect you one way or the other so don't have anything to do with them um don't have anything to do with anyone who is a witch, who is a warlord, who is who is in sorcery, who, who, who has familiar spirits. Don't get yourself involved in tarot cards. Don't get yourself involved with crystal, crystal ball, even horoscope. These are all demonic things. And many Christians, I mean, they mingle, they begin to double with these things. They don't know how demonic they are. Don't get yourself involved with them. The Bible says they can become sneers to you. They can begin to trouble you. They can begin to do things, I mean, to you. Um, and God is warning that you don't have anything to do with these powers. And one of the common things is horoscope. Many people can, oh, I am Scorpio, I'm this and that. Come on, don't call yourself by the name of any star. I mean, Jesus Christ is your only star, your bright and morning star. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, now, what are these hauntings, actually? Hauntings many times can come like a black mist, you know. Sometimes they can come like a fog, a thick fog, or um, a smoke 
you know, and people begin to see these in their houses or around them, especially when they are alone, you know, you know that you are being haunted by the powers of darkness. And, and sometimes, you know, some people will feel, you know, some kind of stench, you know, or some kind of um, um, perfume or sometimes or like, like a rotten fish or like sulfuric acid, some kind of odor that is, go that is around you. You know, you know, whenever you begin to smell those things around you, nobody else is smelling it but you. And you, you, you smell them when you are on alone many times on your own or whether or when you're walking in the in the bush or in the forest or, or in a quiet and lonely place you feel that you've been followed or some kind of mist is around you then you know automatically that you've been haunted or you are in the house you know you begin to feel these things you begin to see these things around you you know that demonic powers are haunting you and you need to be delivered from these demonic hauntings now, you see, um, sometimes also the temperature in the place does change to a warmer temperature, you know, and um, you begin to feel, you know, some kind of presence, you know, around you. Some people they just feel some cold, eerie presence around them. Um, then you know that you are under some kind of demonic hunting. You've been surveillanced by the powers of darkness and you need to get delivered from it. These hauntings are happening in many people's life and they just don't know what is going on. Therefore, you know, this person needs to be break free. I mean, from these powers, because this will begin and other things will, it will develop to other things until, you know, and sometimes this will continue and continue. Demons have time. I mean, they, they, they are spirits. They live, I mean, in eternity. They have time. They can continue to pursue their wickedness until they get full control over the person. And sometimes it can even lead to demonic possession. And so, um, hauntings are really, I mean, demonic powers do haunt people. And so, deliverance need to be secured. Now, I want us to look at some different kinds of hauntings today. And, um, and for you to be able to identify them. The first haunting I want us to look at, I call it residual haunting activities. You know, um, this is when, you know, um, you know somebody went to go is, uh, goes through some kind of traumatic event something some kind of trauma you know um things can begin you know normal but they can end up you know demonic powers can take advantage you know of those situations and then those situations it's just like the bible says everyone is tempted when he's drawn away by his own lust and enticed you know i mean lust is natural to the sinful nature but when entice comes in then a demon begin to play on that lust uh, and then it it becomes a strong hold a demonic hold and those people for them to be delivered the enticing spirit the seducing spirit need to leave for that person to be freed you know so these are the way demonic powers you know um, um occurs now these residual um, um, demonic hauntings usually take place in a um, probably in a house, you know, or some place that um, some kind of um, demonic powers uh, or some kind of ritualistic demonic thing has occurred, you know, sometime in the past. Now, um, take for example, if take for example, say there is a particular house, and that house, some kind of ritualistic killings have been done in those houses or maybe it has become it was a murder house you know <clears throat> and because these activities have been going on in the house you know um if um it, it can cause some uh, it can be the cause of a particular demonic spirit and that demonic spirit now reside in that place that place becomes a stronghold that place becomes um, i mean a demonic um, um um place some people also have started shrines in their houses maybe they died and they've gone and then later on somebody moved into that house and that room was a room that 
I mean, the spirits are being invoked into that room. You know, that person, you know, now comes to live in that house and those spirits begin to manifest in that house. You see, so that place becomes, you know, I mean, a, a, a residual um, place for demonic powers um, and Anyone who comes to live in that place, sometimes, you know, you begin to have dreams, you know, I mean, of a little girl, you know, always coming to your dream, or you have dreams of rape, or you have dreams of ritualistic murders, you begin to, these demonic hauntings begin to manifest themselves in your dreams, showing you events that have happened in that house or in that room, you know, and so as a result, I mean, this is what, you know, people, I mean, people usually talk about, you know, it says, oh, come on, I feel anytime I go into a room or this room, I feel I am afraid. It's like uh, things are happening within that room. You know, it is called residual um, um, haunting. Um, that place is connected to something that has uh, happened in the past which is traumatic or which is stressful, you know, and as a result, that room or that house has become a haunted um, room or an on, uh, um, on, uh, or haunted house. People um, call, usually call it ghosts. Oh, I, I do see ghosts in the house. So I, I hear people walking up and down. Um, I hear people screaming, you know, and those things in the house. I mean, or I see, I mean, I'm, I'm having um, 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 a vision or seeing, you know, movement in the house. Or it's like you're sitting down and you're having this picture of something that has been a, a film, um, I mean a movie, a motion picture of things that have been going on in that house. Uh, you're having dreams all the time of somebody crying or somebody doing, you know, it is because uh, something traumatic has happened in that house uh, and that house is haunted. That's why they call it haunted houses. You see, if, as I said again, if there has been a demonic shrine there, you know, there has been ritualistic killing, there have been some um, hauntings that have happened through sex, uh, um, rapes, you know, and if the place has been a brothel or some, or some kind of rape has been done there in, in, in many measures, you know, it, it sort of like, you know, cause all of these, you know, to happen in that particular house or wherever you are, it can cause that house, you know, to be haunted it can cause that house to be haunted now you know i can give you a lot of examples you know um of haunted you know houses you know um i remember there was a time you know back home in sierra leone in this in a, in a in a in a town called waterloo you know we went to a retreat they gave us a house we didn't know that that house was haunted we would be in our room spraying and then we'll hear footsteps going up and down you know the parlor we will hear somebody going to the bathroom and hear the person we you know, and all the rest. So in the morning, will wake, and I will be, uh, I will be teasing my other brother. So why were you? I mean, we were praying. Why are you walking up and down the house? You know, all night. Or why are you using the bathroom all night? He says, Oh, it's not me. It's not me. It's not me. Then we find out that the house, you know, was haunted, um, and that person, um, 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 and the house need deliverance really because it was an haunted house. You know, that's one of the examples as well. I've been also in places in South America, South. Um, um, so the southern part of the United States in Florida where they've called me to go and pray for a lot of haunted houses where the houses are haunted and what we observe that some of these new developments that were taking place over there were built over old you know um, um, Native American Indians um, graveyards you know those places where you know very I mean consecrated in far as far as the um, the American Indians are concerned, sacred places, you know, where these people, you know, worship, you know, whatever they, are, they were worshipping in those days and everything. And then it was a graveyard, you know, where they consult, you know, um, their spirits and all the rest of it. And so we found out that those houses that were built over those cemeteries, they were haunted. And so um, that's why it's very important that when you move over to a house, uh, you know, it's, it's even very important that you try to study what happens, I mean, or where this house was built, who um, reside there before you, you know, and everything, because, I mean, all of those, you know, uh, information is very important for you to know, because that house can be, I mean, a haunted house, you know, uh, maybe somebody was killed in the house, um, killed in that particular room, 
you know, and um, it may be a ritualistic killing or it may be something else. Um, so that place could be haunted. Um, you know, so it is very important that you try to make a discovery, you know, of all of that. I remember there was a deliverance that we were doing, you know, and um, this lady, you know, they called us to the house to go and pray for her. She was knocked down by a demon, very strong demon. I mean, I'm telling you, not even one person can hold her down. Several people have to hold her because these spirits, they have a lot of strength, you know, and you can feel the atmosphere. This lady, in fact, they didn't even want to be delivered. Um, you cannot cast out a spirit out of somebody if the person don't want to be delivered. She was even calling for demons um, to come and help. I tell you, that particular um, house was, or the temperature was different. And you can even, the atmosphere was thick. It was tense. It's like if you put your finger up like this, it would, I'm telling you, you will feel the thickness of the atmosphere when the demonic powers came into that room. For praise the Lord, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And um, eventually the lady was um, wanted, I mean, we talked to her, she, she was willing to let go of her demons and we prayed and God delivered them. Hallelujah. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. He says, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by enemies or to you. So, therefore, um, the second um, kind of um, demonic hunting, you know, I want to talk about is called um, poltergeist. Poltergeist. Poltergeist, basically, um, they are what we call noisy spirit. You know, I mean, you can be in the house, you just, um, there's no wind or whatever, the door just slam, you know, lock, you know, and things begin to move in the house without anybody moving them, you know, and um, I know somebody we were praying for, um, for deliverance, she will be sleeping in her bed and then um, these demonic powers will lift up her bed and put her on the floor, you know, so, I mean, these are demonic um powers that move objects and move people and um, and sometimes also they can I mean it, it is anyone who's who is experiencing that you know many times is very close to the verge of demonic possession um, and um, um, some people are able to move objects you know I mean it's like they will be in the bed or whatever with their eyes closed and things begin to move they begin to manifest you know the spirits in them causing objects to move door to close things to begin to they will throw things all around without even moving them you know that is what is called um, poltergeist and it is demonic um, and if anyone is under those powers, they need deliverance. Um, it is demonic haunting as well. And so um, these, I mean, demonic powers possess so much strength. And um, unless um, these people are delivered, it can also move to um, demonic possession. So, I want us to also look at some examples in the scriptures. You see, the Bible tells us in, about concerning Saul um, in the book of um, Samuel, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 19, from verse 9 to verse 10. It says, An evil spirit from the Lord was upon Saul, and as he sat in his house um, with his javelin in his hand, and David played with his hand, and Saul sought to smite David even to the wall with the, the javelin. But he slipped away out of Saul's presence, and he smote the javelin into the wall, and David fled and escaped that night. So we see that um, um, the Spirit of God left Saul, and an evil spirit comes on him. And this evil spirit will um, want him to kill people, and he lived his whole life trying to haunt um, 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 David to kill him until he eventually died. And uh, we see, so these are spirits. There are some people who, you know, once they possess the spirit, they want to haunt other people as well. And it's called a haunting spirit. And um, there are some people as well who may have dual personalities. It's like when they are in their right mind, in their, no, they are nice, the nicest people. But it's like somebody else just take over them. And then what happens is they begin to do things that are out of the way. Um, 
you know, deliverance need to come there. Um, now let's look at another example. It's Ab Abimelech in the Bible. The Bible says in Judges chapter 9 and verse 23 to verse um, 25, And God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the men of Shechem. And, um, and the men of Shechem dealt treacherously with Abimelech that the cruelty done on the three score and ten sons of Jerobeba might come and their blood be laid upon Abimelech their brother which slew him and upon the men of Shechem which um, aided him in the killing of his brethren. And the men of Shechem sent liars in wait for him in the top of a mountain, and they rob all that come along that way by them. And it was told Abimelech. And so now we see, you can imagine, this man, Abimelech, killed 70 of his brothers, behead them on one stone. Many people today are being haunted because of the spirit of murder. Because of murder. Many murderers. I remember, you know, when I mean, Sierra Leone went through, you know, um, that our about 10 years of rebel war, many of the young people, you know, who killed and raped and everything, you know, after the war, they become haunted by this demonic, by this, by, 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 by the spirit of murder. I mean, they have killed, they have raped, they have burnt houses, they have cut people's hands. Many tragic things uh, they have done. And at the end of the day, after the war, many of them become mental, mentally retarded, mental breakdown. I mean, just like the Bible tells us here, you know, of Abimelech killing 70 of his brothers. And uh, the Bible says a spirit, usually when there is so much killings by a person, there is a spirit that comes into that I mean, particular situation. And we see that the spirit came between Abimelech and the men of Shechem, and uh, they lay wait. Now they want to begin to even kill Abimelech. And so we see another example of a haunting spirit, a spirit that came through a traumatic event that has done. I mean, many people today who are murderers, who have been people who have been assassin, you know, these people later on having all of these haunting spirit, all of the, the, the people that they have killed, um, um, there is a haunting spirit upon them. The Bible also tells us uh, that when Cain killed Abel, his brother, you know, the Bible says um, Cain, you know, after God said to him, he says, Cain, what have you done? Cain said, you know, that somebody is going to come and kill him because he has killed his brother. And God said, I'm going to put a mark on you that no one kills you. Because, I mean, the Bible says, whosoever kills anybody, I mean, or that somebody else will kill him. You know, haunting spirit that will come to haunt life. That's why murder is a very serious crime. You know, it's not only, you know, can cause, I mean, the wrath of God, but it can cause demonic spirits um, to come into the situation um, and to do the killings especially that person's life who have taken somebody else's blood you know so these are another example let me give another example um in scripture the bible talks about um Ahab. Ahab because he have done i mean he killed naboth i mean for his vineyard you know the bible says isaiah the prophet elijah came and prophesied and said you are going to because of what you did killing this man you're gonna die you see, but when the time reached, the Bible says, you know, I mean, there was a meeting in heaven and, a, and God says, who is going to convince Ahab to go to this battle to die? His time has reached for, I mean, him to, him to die. And so there was a conspiracy against him. And this conspiracy was even, even happened in heaven. And the Bible says a spirit came and said, I will law him to go into this battle to die. And what happened? This spirit now became, you know, the Bible says a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And they prophesied for him to go to the battle. And he did not know that he was going for his death. You see? So there are many people today who have been haunted by spirit to, for their death. Especially in a situation where, you know, there has been, you know, a lot of stuff going on in that person's life or his family. You know, I mean, some things that have gone in in the past, maybe there is a curse in the family. And so a spirit is being sent to, um, to, to, to lure that family or that person to the death that is being prescribed by the curse in that family um, for that person to be delivered. Now, these are the things we are talking about. 
haunting spirit. Now, the Bible, there's, there's another haunting spirit that we call witchcraft haunting. You know, um, people can sit down in their house, they see shadows passing by or lighting passing by. Or maybe some people may even see eyes on the wall watching them. And they are under, I mean, witchcraft surveillance. And that is what we call witchcraft haunting, monitoring spirit. And um, they are watching over, you know, and to... Um, do things concerning that person's life. So therefore, we need to understand um, that these hauntings are going on. There are surveillances. There are people who are watching through their, their demonic mirrors, you know, haunting people's life. Well, the Bible tells us that, um, hallelujah, there is no divination. There, divination, there is no um, 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 enchantment that is fashioned against you, a child of God that will prosper. And so therefore, I mean, you need to begin to go into spiritual warfare when demonic powers are, are beginning to surveillance you. Now, we have what also we call um, infirmity hauntings. Um, um, one of the spirits, uh, I mean, that caused that is the spirit of epilepsy. You know, um, epilepsy spirit, you know, there are some people who have very severe epileptic spirit that comes against them to haunt them. Um, the Bible tells us um, of an account in the scripture where um, there was a boy, you know, the scripture says um, in the book of Mark chapter 9 from verse 20 to verse 27, when the spirit would throw him in the fire, throw him in the water, throw him in different places uh, so that the spirit will kill this young man. Um, and so... I mean, these are demonic spirits and the, they are, their main objective is to kill that individual. You know, I was going, you know, I mean, to school with a, um, um, a, a little girl. We were all little at the time. We were in primary school named Janet. Janet are this prone to accident. You know, she is accident prone. I mean, Janet is hardly Janet will be, I mean, will have a full week at school. You will hear her car hit her something happened to her water you know for a uh, hot water spilled on her Dif different 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 things you know was happening to janet you know janet have so much scars in our bodies and our body sorry because of all of these you know accident prone you know i remember later on you know, i thought about janet i said let me ask because she used to live in a particular area um in our city you know and then the last thing i heard concerning janet they said a wall fell on her and she died. Demonic contents causing infirmity and death. You know, there are, it's one more I want to talk about before we close. We call it portals. You know, there are many people who are having dreams and you're dreaming and then what happens is you find yourself, you know, in a place. You know, you're lost. It's like you're in another dimension. You're lost and you're trying to get out of the place. You're not able to get out of it and you begin to struggle in your dreams. There are some other people who, who just get lost mysteriously. They are caught up in a web. They are caught up in, a dim, in another dimension. They're caught up. That's why some people would, some people who have disappeared for a while and come back, they will tell you, I mean, oh, I was in the underworld or some, they took me under the water or they took me somewhere. It's like I'm in another different realm. I'm in different spell. I mean, these are demonic portals where people are held. And some of sometimes they are even used as agents of darkness. And, and so, I mean, these are some of the things, you know, I mean, we're talking about today. But I want you to know, hallelujah, that for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. If you are going through these demonic hauntings, I want you to understand today, hallelujah, that there is power in the name of Jesus to set you free. For this purpose, Jesus Christ was manifested that he might destroy the work of the devil. I am here to tell you that uh, Jesus Christ said, I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. So if you've been haunted by the powers of darkness, Take it seriously, you know, because Jesus Christ uh, wants to set you free. Jesus Christ wants to deliver you. Jesus Christ wants to make you own. I want to pray for you right now. Father, I pray, Lord, for anyone that has been haunted by the powers of darkness. Uh, I pray, Lord, that these persons and these people will come to the place where they will have deliverance, uh, where they will have breakthrough, where the powers of darkness will flee and leave them. I pray, Lord God Almighty, O oh God, uh, that 
that they will find that, hallelujah, Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and that they will be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth, hallelujah, and that they will be delivered from the powers of darkness, for because for this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Well, I am Apostle Desmond Thomas, and this is Prophetic and Biblical Questions. Hallelujah. And I pray that the Lord will bless you, and the Lord will deliver you from every power and every work of darkness. In Jesus' name, amen. Peace of the Lord.